Sanger's suborbital bomber was unique in several ways. For one, his vehicle was reusable and employed a revolutionary launch system. Eugen Sanger's idea for a horizontally launched rocket plane was novel, brand new, fresh. It was reusable. It, it could be set up any place. It didn't require the thousands of people it required to launch a V-2 rocket. Sanger's horizontally launched rocket could be done with several hundred people. And the turnaround time was in matters of, of hours, not days, as, as Von Braun's uh, A9, A10 combination would require. This uh, sled device would have been powered with up to about 15 of the V2 engines that Warner Von Braun had developed. So the sled would have had to contain tankage for large amounts of fuel to push the sled down the track to power the bomber, which was a... As the bomber reached a point near the end of the track, the vehicle would pull away from a jet-powered sled. It would remain unpowered for just a few moments before an onboard engine, designed by Sanger himself, would kick in. And it would have burned an onboard load of fuel weighing about 90 tons minutes until the fuel was exhausted. At that point, the aircraft would pitch over, and because of its forward speed and centripetal force, would go into what is in effect a low Earth orbit at roughly 115 to 120 mile altitude. It would also be a major technological breakthrough. At roughly 100 feet long and with a 40-foot wingspan, the craft was designed for hypersonic flight, which meant it could achieve a speed in excess of 3,800 miles per hour. And somewhere over Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, this bomb internally in the bomb bay would be released in a ballistic arc designed to hit New York or Washington, D.C.